You're listening to another episode of the Fredericksburg Strong Podcast. This is a local forum to inform and entertain our community, discuss local news, promote small businesses, and celebrate our hometown heroes with a little dose of humor to keep you entertained. Our mission is simple, to keep Fredericksburg strong. Today's podcast is powered by Pohanka Nissan and Pohanka Hyundai of Fredericksburg. And now, here's your host, Tim Pohanka. Hey everybody, it's Tim Pohank and welcome to Fredericksburg Strong. We're here on the Fredericksburg Strong Digital Network and it's been a while since we've had a a guest in here to speak with. I'm very excited. Uh, We've got Dave, is it Wernley? Wernley. Wernley. And you are from Busy Platform Builders. And you know, I, I had a chance to go online and look at your website. And you know, all through it, you know, you're talking about your your people's platform, their platform. And when and you start to look at it. You know, it looks like it's really a community site, but w- talk about it. What is a platformer? What, what, what do you work? What, who is your target audience? So our target our, our target audience is writers or creators who are trying to get their message out to the world, and they feel all alone in what they're trying to do. Uh, their family doesn't get them. Their friends don't get them. And so they'll they'll say to a family member, "Oh, I'm having trouble building my platform." And the family member will say, oh, yeah, it was hard building the deck off the our back of our house, too. Are you using pine or redwood? You know? <laughs> yeah. And the writer's like, ah, oh, not getting there from here. Because a platform is the writer's online, on, online presence. Okay. And how they're getting their message out to the world. And the beauty of it right now is there's no gatekeepers. You know, you don't have to convince a publisher to put you out there. You can get a website for $12 a year and put yourself out there. And... Um, you, you've got a connection to everyone else in the world. There's nothing stopping you from getting your message out there right now with the internet. Um, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. The, the technology can be overwhelming, although right now the tech is easier than it's ever been in the history of the world. But it's good to have community. It's good to have help. And when you're trying to do this all yourself, it can be really, really overwhelming. So what we did is we created a community of writers who are all trying to do the same thing. We're all at approximately the same place, and we're trying to help each other and move our platforms forward together. So when you mention when you mention that it's a right it's writers. So we're talking, you know, book writers from various genres or is it just anyone in general who's got an idea that they're trying to put out there? Yeah, pretty much. It could be it could be musicians, it could be writers. I specifically target writers, but these same techniques work for musicians, they work for artists. Um, they work for anyone with a message who's trying to get their message out on the internet and change the world. So talk to me about technique. Uh, you know wh- what you're what you're trying to promote. Are you you know you've got a website? Are you using a standard website platform? Are you looking at marketing care, uh, help that you're giving them? You know, how far does, down this process are you able to tell to somebody? Yeah. So we help them get started from ground zero where they don't have anything to getting a website up, uh, start building an audience, techni- te- techniques for marketing, you know, what to say on your website, how to set it up so that when someone comes to your website, they know what to do. Okay. There's a lot of beautiful websites on the internet, and you look at them, it's like, gee, this is beautiful. I should print it out and hang it in my living room, but I've got absolutely no idea what to do. Okay, what yeah, person, which makes sense. Yeah. Obviously, interaction and how you engage makes it makes, right. makes all the difference. Do you, do you want the person to buy something from you? Do you want them to join your email list? Do you want them to download your free PDF? You know, that needs to be really obvious, and we usually tell people to have a big red button in the upper right-hand corner. So what's the thing that that usually everyone just, what's the usual hang-up? I mean, you know, they always say some businesses will grow to X, and then other people could take it to Y, and then you need someone else to take it to Z. So what is usually that very first stopping point for most people, writers or anyone putting their platform together? I, I think there's three things you need in order to move forward. Uh, first, you do need a platform, and writers kind of have a sometimes have an aversion to this because they don't know what to do, they don't understand the tech necessarily, um, and they've built it up in their mind in this real complicated thing, and it's really not. It's really pretty easy once you get the first physical platform stood up. Um, and then you need a community. You need other people doing this um, to kind of help you get over yourself. The, the main roadblock, usually, is right here between your ears. Okay. You know, usually um, 
people think, oh, no one's going to want to listen to my message, or how do I get people to pay attention to me, or how do I make my message clear and get it out there and differentiate myself from all the other 87 million people who are trying to get their message out there. And then the third thing you need is momentum, just actually doing something. And a lot of times with writers, again, that, that problem between our own ears is we want to make it perfect. And uh, usually, usually writers and creatives, you're your own worst enemy, which is good. You want to be your own worst critic, uh, but that can stop you from moving forward. So your um, your 90% is better than somebody else's 150%. So I tell people 90% and ship, and that rule has really helped me because I'm a perfectionist also. And perfectionism really is just socially acceptable procrastination. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if it's not perfect, I can I can assuage my fear of putting it out there. That well, I'm not afraid to put it out there. It's just not good enough yet. Or things will never be perfect when you right. keep looking at it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So if it's never perfect, then I don't have to actually face my fear of putting it out into the world. And, and the fear is interesting when you think about it. You know, people have a bigger fear of being of public speaking than they have of being burned alive. They do. How, do uh, how does that make any sense? You know, hey, I know, right? pour gasoline on me and torch me before I'm willing to speak in front of five or six people. Yeah. When you're talking about these, about this, or, uh, a writer, okay, obviously, when you're a writer, you're, you're creative, you're putting your thoughts on there, and then you're looking at someone else to be a tech guy. Those, those are, they, you may think that they're both they're using the same side of the brain, and clearly they're not. Right. You know, are you helping them as critics of their work as well as helping them with their website? Yes. You are gaining almost like a publishing house of, of additional help then, is that correct? Yeah, basically with, uh, I mean, we don't do any publishing, but we help them write Well, blogs. online publishing. You're, you're, on, on, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. true. You're certainly online publishing. Every time you hit publish, you know, on your blog, yeah. it goes up on the internet, you publish something. Um, yeah, so we help them write good blog posts. We help them work with images. Uh, usually on a blog post you want a featured image. People don't know how to, to work with images, so we help them find free images on the website that are royalty free, that you don't have to pay an arm and leg for. Um, we teach them how to write good headlines, because that headline is yeah, how you're going to get somebody to read the article or not. If, if that headline doesn't catch them, they're not going to read the article. Um, and then how to, how to make a good article. Um, a good blog post is different than a book. If you, if you bought a book and you're going to sit down to read the book, you're going to read every page in the book. And you're going to turn the page and you're going to read every page, every word on the page. With blog posts, it's not like that. People don't have time. They don't have a lot of time. They want to read the article, but they only got a couple minutes here at work or wherever they're looking at it, so they scan it. There are some people who will read every word, but most people will just go through and scan it. So we teach people to, in each paragraph, uh, ask yourself, after you've written the blog post, go back in each paragraph and say, if my readers only read one thing in this paragraph, what, what do I want them to read? And bold that sentence. So you design the blog post for scanners because there are some people that are going to go through and the only things they're going to read are the headlines, the bullets, and the bolded uh, phrases. So after you're done, you, you want to go through and just read those things and make sure that your story still hangs together. It, it, it's very interesting. When you look at it that way, um, because a lot of blogs, people are, are to your point, scanning. Yeah, you know, they're they're looking at information whether they're on their phone bored at a, you know waiting for someone to come out of the grocery store or they're here. Where have you found that most people get the best response to their blogs? It depends on the blog. Okay. Um, it it depends on the blog, and that's one of the um, that's one of the things we help people with is is getting out there. Um, uh, finding groups that do the same thing as, as you are um, and join that group that does the same thing you do and be helpful. Help the other people in the group. Don't go in the group and promote yourself, but just be helpful and you'll get an opportunity to send someone a direct message and say, you know, hey, if you want more on this subject, I wrote an article that might be helpful to you. you know, it's, all, it's all about serving the audience and, and helping, helping them. Yeah, without a doubt. Obviously, you, you came up with this idea, I'm sensing, because of a need that you had or you and your wife had. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. We, we've been in other writers' communities, and there wasn't really anything here local in Fredericksburg. So we started on. Where did you get your start in writing? What would you, what are you, what are you, what's your forte in writing? 
So I write uh, Christian nonfiction okay. books. I write about intimacy with Jesus. Okay. Um, and when I first started this writing journey, I was listening to a, a podcast by Michael Hyatt, who um, was the publisher at Thomas Nelson, which is the largest publishing house in the U.S. at, at that time. Um, and he, had a, he was interviewing uh, another author, and that other author said that he, he got to the point where he was more afraid of not trying than he was of failing. And I thought, wow, that really, I mean, I was, I was on 95, I was driving up to, you know, my day job in Northern Virginia, I was getting off the exit at like, you know, five in the morning, and he, he, the, the author he was talking to, a guy named Jeff Goins, said, I'm, I'm more afraid of not trying than I am of failing. And that really struck with, stuck with me, and I thought, you know, what if God's got all the dominoes lined up, you know, for, for this to work, and I, I, you know, meet Jesus on that day, right, and see all the resources he had lined up for this whole writing gig to work, and it never happened because I never tipped over the first domino. And it's interesting that you phrase it that way. You know, you know when you look at when you look at faith and you look at where people are, and they always go, well, well you know, I, I think. And this may be offensive to some, but it's not meant to be. It's more meant, meant, you know, when I hear people say, well, if God meant it to be, it would have been meant to be. And the other way you look at it is, well, if he set all these things up for you, <laughs> you know, maybe he's saying that you needed to help yourself yeah. a little bit and have a little free will and journey yeah. and, and turn to the journey. And that's that's yeah. kind of what, what goes on there. Uh, and I think that's a, it's a really interesting point to make for people is that, you know, you, you do have to put a little, just a, that, that to, to, yeah. to, to point that nudge that goes yeah. into it. And, and, and you know, and most people do fail right before they're going to have success. And, yeah, and studies they, find they really that all do. the time. They, they really do. Whether you look at it, you know, from a, from a Christian point of view or even just a secular point of view, you know, and in, in, um, Stephen Pressfield wrote The Art of uh, the, the War of Art where he talks about the resistance. Anything you get close to doing something great, there's, there's a greater amount of resistance that you encounter. And how does it create a person to push through that? But you're right. And su successful people all avoid doing one thing that every non-successful person does, and that's quit. Yeah, yeah. I we here, you know, I've I've read a lot. I've done a lot with Tony Robbins for my team members mm -hmm. or for myself. And that's one of the things that I always took from him is that most people, you know, they, their problem is that little bit of pain that it takes yeah. to get all of this success. And they'll always focus on that, that little bit. And I think that's kind of where your, your community kind of comes into play. You, you try to break down those excuses. Yeah. You know, uh, here at the dealership, I, we, you know, whenever we, I joke that no one sells a car because they have any skill, mm -hmm. and that's not because they don't, or it's not because they don't do a good job, but if you're one of the people who didn't sell a car that day, you always find that excuse as to why why it happened for them and not for you. Oh, they, you know, they have an uh, office closer to the door. Uh, oh, you know, they, they, you know, then they pick yeah. any, they can pick anything out of the, out of the air. Right. No one sits there and goes, oh my gosh, that person called that customer five times. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that person has studied and knows more about the cars than anybody else. Right. Wow, they actually went and got the car, got it cleaned, brought it down, and let the customer see the car in a right. pristine, you know, without any, any dust or pollen on it. They don't look at those things, they look yeah. at the other. And in your, in your writing communities or in your artistic communities, do you feel that they need that, that coaching where, they, where you know, they, they've done this good job of making the creativity, but that whole, okay, now it's a business, or in, yeah. in, in, in a way, you have to get in that business mentality. You, you really do, because even if you get traditionally published, the, the majority of marketing the book and promotion falls on the author today. Didn't used to be that way, but today it's that way. Even in traditional publishing, the majority of the promotion is on the author. What are, What are some of the effective ways to promote? Is it video? Is it you know uh, talking about it on Facebook Live or YouTube? Live? I mean, where Where do you, Where can authors or or artists really start to get their their work known? The most effective way to promote is to start promoting before you finish your book. So with with a blog by getting a blog up and getting a website up and start writing and start building an audience and then you're interacting with your audience and you're learning from your audience what they need what their problems are and what problem you can solve for them so that when you write your book you don't launch to crickets now is 
is traditional publishing as important if as it was in the past? Not really. There's been a lot of successful books that have been self-published. Um, and there's got to be a business model involved in that. Is that do you pay cents per download, or, or what's the business model? Then? Yeah, so the it's it's all about the size of your email list because that's where the scale comes from. So if you have you know a, a large email list and you put out uh, an ebook once a quarter, and you know, you put out a, a three dollar ninety nine cent ebook, so so four dollar ebook, and you've got ten thousand people that buy it every quarter. That's a pretty good chunk of change. Yeah, you get. Um, so it's all about scale. It's all about the size of your e email list. So it's really uh, the response. Are, I mean, clearly, I think you're making a, you're making a good point. It also, depends on the, the what you're talking about. Right. You know, if you're if you're writing Tom Clancy, James Patterson books, where right. someone's like, "Oh, I got to go to the next one. Oh, I got to go to the next one. I got to the next right. one." You know, you, you've kind of right. built that. You know, that that. Oh, oh, what's the next story? What's the next story? If you're writing about you know gardening, it's probably a little bit harder. Right. Well, I think the 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 main business model is build your website, build your platform before you publish. See, I did I did this wrong. I I wrote my book and I I published it. Um, and I've still got 15 boxes of books in my basement because I didn't build my website first. You know, so you think, oh, if I publish it, they will come. You know, we call that the field of dreams yeah. publishing model. Right? Somehow I will be the one person to make right. it to the New York Times bestseller list out of everything else that's being written in, in, in books. Of the yeah, the and it, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, so I'm, I'm competing you, with, yeah. I'm with you build your audience first through your website, through, through blogging, and then you have people asking you questions and you figure out what problem you can solve, and they're used to getting content from you, they're used to getting free content from you um, on your blog. You're solving problems for them, you're building up a relationship with them. I have people I've never met um, on my blog that one, one week I, I skipped a week. I, I didn't blog for a week, I skipped it. And I got email from a reader that said, are you okay? Are you, are you sick? What happened? Did, did I miss it? Did I miss the email? What happened? It's like this guy actually cared that I wasn't that that he didn't get my email that week with the, the blog article in it. So aside from making my day, it just shows that you you make a relationship with these people and they feel like they have a relationship with you. They know you a little bit um, and they trust you. And eventually, when you go to sell something, as you know, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. So you've got that relationship already built up, and you've already built up some reciprocity because you've been giving them a lot of free online content. So what's your day job? So my day job is I'm a software engineer. Okay. So I've, I'm familiar with the tech, so I can, I can figure out the tech, which is helpful because if somebody gets stuck, we, we can figure it out. And there's usually somebody in the group, that's a great thing about a community, is there's usually somebody in it that's already hit that problem and solved it. So rather than banging your head against the wall for two weeks trying to solve it, you just ask a question in the group, hey, does anybody know how to embed an image in WordPress or something? And, and somebody's done that before and can help you help you figure it out. Uh, it really is a unique uh, concept. I mean, when you've got collaborations that going on, um, you've added that community, you've got a, a, a group that's able to, to really impact what's going on. Now, you are collecting new members right now, is that right? We will be uh, at the end of August. Okay. Uh, so, August. what's what's a new member? What can a new member expect? So, there are three membership levels. It's a membership site, so it's got private content behind a paywall um, that only members can get to, and that content will take you through um, launching a blog to begin with, um, how to how to launch a blog, how to work with images, how to make a good blog post, how to write a good headline, how to set up your email service provider how to send good emails to your list, how to, how to increase your list size, how to get your list started. Um, and I've got templates for this. I've got the exact templates I used to get my list to 100 people when I started. Um, and you, you know, you could Facebook message people and I've got the exact text I used. You know, you change the name, you know, you put a little yeah, personal message You can't put the insert in. name here. Right, yeah, you don't put, you know, dear name. Are you interested yeah. in my website, right? You know, so you personalize it a little bit. But having a script, having a template script, really helps people because they don't have to come up with the words themselves. So we've got templates for things. We talk about how to use search engine optimization, how to use keywords in your websites, um, 
how to write good headlines, how, how, to, how to publish, and basically how to get off the ground and, and get rolling. So you get all the, the private <clears throat> all, all the private content behind the paywall. In addition to that, there's a private Facebook group. Okay. So that's the, that's the community level membership. So if you have a problem, you, you know, it's just not working for me, you can ask a question in the, in the private Facebook group and people will help you. So that's the community membership. That's $30 a month, $29 a month. Then there's a Zoom membership. So in addition to that, we do a monthly Zoom call, a group coaching call on Zoom uh, for $59 a month. Okay. <laughs> so you can actually get face to face with other people doing it and um, we'll, we'll solve whatever problem you have there. Um, and then the third level is the mastermind level, which is a uh, small group of, of mastermind people that in addition to everything in the first two levels, we meet in person once a quarter. Okay, wow. And we also have a private Slack channel so we can talk to each other um, on Slack and solve whatever problems we're, we're running into. And we'll do a, we'll do a one-day meetup, full, a full-day meetup once a quarter here well, locally in Fredericksburg. And so you only do a new membership drive once a year? Maybe twice. Maybe twice. So it's, so yeah. it's very limited. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a very unique. Right. So we're going you know, to have your, your, your website name has been on the, uh, has been on the screen while we're, we've been talking. So that's the, obviously they can reach out to you there. Uh, can they reach out to you on Facebook as well? Yeah, okay. I'm on, on Facebook as uh, Dave Hornley. Okay, and um, if, if you were to if you were to leave one thing, one important message for people looking to start out, what would that be? I would say that you're not alone. That there are other people in this area uh, who are doing what you're trying to do, and you don't have to figure this out all by yourself. Uh, community is the fastest way to fast forward your progress. So I would say join a community. Have, it, you see, have your idea, you know, it's good to have it, and you, right. probably someone's going to want to listen to it. Right. It's just a question of finding out how to, how to get that, your, your name out there and your voice out there. Right. I, Dave, this has been really interesting. Uh, you know, I never thought of it that way. I mean, we always think about writing a book, and I don't know, am I going to write a book? I don't know. Huh. And now you, you seem to found a way to make it easier. So if anyone's out there really thinks they've got the next great idea or the next maybe the next great series of things to talk about, you've given them a good reason. I mean, you look at this, you think, I think back when I look at your group and I think of some of the other ones, Chip and Joanna Gaines just had an idea to have a TV show of fixing some stuff up. And now look where they are. Yeah. So it just takes an idea and some people to help you along the way. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This has been uh, Fredericksburg Strong. I'm Tim Poenka. I've been uh, with Dave Wernley, and uh, we'll see you next time here. Thanks for listening to the Fredericksburg Strong podcast. Be sure to visit fredericksburgstrong.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content, as well as submit a request for you or your organization to appear on one of our future episodes. See you next time with another exciting episode of Fredericksburg Strong.